Chapter 12, The Perfect Place. Nadia worried a lot. She didn't want to worry, but every morning, first thing, Lucy told her all the bad things Lucy's dad saw on the news. The ice caps are melting, Lucy told Nadia. There are angry cows running around, and birds are getting this really bad flu. The world is a mess. It's getting messier every day, said Lucy, shaking her head the way her dad did every night. Every day, Lucy had lots of new things for Nadia to worry about. If you get bitten by a rabid weasel, you have to get 14 shots, she said. If you look straight at a rhinoceros, it will definitely attack. Can't I worry about stuff when I'm a grown-up? asked Nadia. Don't you get it? cried Lucy. You probably won't even live to be a teenager. So Nadia bit her fingernails until they were ragged stumps. She had dark smudges under her eyes because she couldn't sleep. If someone dropped a book on the floor, Nadia ducked. Who would like to get me some purple paper? asked Miss Plum. Of course, Lucy waved her hand super hard because purple was her favorite color. But Miss Plum picked Nadia. Nadia jumped up. She had wanted Miss Plum to call on her all year. Remember the scary falcon and the nasty wolf? whispered Lucy. Oh, Nadia stopped, then said, Miss Plum, maybe Lucy should do it. I asked you, Nadia, said Miss Plum. She didn't say it in a mean way, but even so, Nadia knew it meant that she had to go into the closet. So she walked over, clenched her hands by her sides, and stepped inside. There were no falcons or wolves or scary things anywhere, only a smell like the woods in summer and wonderful things beckoning from every shelf. Nadia picked up three sheets of purple paper, then heard a soft purring sound. There on the shelf next to the paper sat a little striped cat, its coat gleaming softly. It leapt gracefully onto Nadia's shoulder and curled up there beside her ear. Look, said Nadia, stepping shyly from the closet. Look. Everyone oohed and awed, even the boys, because Nadia's little cat was perfect. Nadia hadn't even known she wanted a cat until she got this one. How soft it was, how pretty its striped fur and its pink nose, how calm its dark yellow eyes. Thank you, Nadia, said Miss Plum after everyone had gotten a good look at the little cat. As Nadia headed back to her desk, Ms. Plum picked up her book to continue the story she was reading to the class. The barn was very large. It was very old, she read. Cats carry tons of diseases, whispered Lucy when Nadia sat back down at her desk. Really? Nadia shifted her shoulders uneasily. The little cat snuggled against her neck, soft and warm. I think I'll give it some of my tuna sandwich, Nadia whispered. Tuna fish has some kind of worm thing, said Lucy. It gets into your bones, I think and eats them up. Oh, Nadia frowned. The tiny cat purred against her ear. Plus, there's this weird algae thing happening in the ocean, Lucy hissed, glancing to see if Miss Plum was listening. It smelled of grain and of harness dressing and of axle grease and of rubber boots. Miss Plum was still reading. And that probably means that soon there won't be enough oxygen in the air anymore, said Lucy. Right, Nadia's shoulders slumped. The cat snuggled against her neck, soft and warm. You better give me your cat, Lucy said. It could bite you, you know. Nadia reached up and lifted the cat from her shoulder. It, she held it in her hand. The cat opened its mouth. It did have sharp white teeth. Then it licked Nadia's finger with its pink tongue. Its tongue was soft and scratchy at the same time. Plus a giant meteor could hit the earth, said Lucy. That's a real fact. Nadia ran her finger along the back of her cat. Its fur rippled under her finger like a piece of velvet. Elephants are most likely to attack at dawn, said Lucy. The cat leapt back onto Nadia's shoulder and snuggled down again. It purred so loudly that Nadia had a hard time hearing Lucy. You can lose your hearing if you listen to really loud music, said Nadia. Hmm. Or, excuse me, said Lucy. Hmm, said Nadia. Are you listening? said Lucy as loud as she dared. Nadia nodded dreamily, but she wasn't really listening. All she could hear was the cat's deep contented purr. It was like a soft faraway thunder. 
and Nadia remembered she liked the rain. She looked out the window. It was nearly summer. The tree outside Ms. Plum's window was green with leaves that shifted with shadows and sunlight. A sparrow scolded and bobbed on one of the twigs. A tiny silver, silvery plane whispered across the soft blue sky. On the table by the window, Clyde the hamster nibbled on a sunflower seed, his whiskers quivering. Hip hop blinked in the sun. Ms. Plum closed her book. She placed it on her desk with a vase of plum flowers and a jar of plum colored pencils and the basket of plums dusted with silver. She tilted her head and her glasses sparkled in the sunlight. She smiled. Everyone smiled back. What a wonderful class you are. What a wonderful year, said Miss Plum. Nadia nodded. Everyone nodded. Ms. Plum really did have the best class in all of springtime elementary. And Nadia was glad she was there. Ms. Plum gazed out the window of her empty classroom. The playground was empty. The halls were empty. School was out for the summer. Ms. Plum sighed. Then she did something she did every year. She walked down the aisles and touched each desk as she passed, remembering each and every student. She dabbed at her eyes and snuffled just a little bit. Surely this was her best class ever. Scooping up the plum colored pencils on her desk, she went to the closet and set them in a pencil basket on the shelf. She stared into the very back of the back of the closet where the dark was as soft and as deep as velvet. My best class ever, she said, pushing up her sparkly glasses. Then after a moment, she said, you're right. I do say that every year, don't I? She left the closet, then suddenly turned and de declared loudly into the closet. And every year it's true. Then she closed the closet door for the summer. The end.